Hey, Slacker. Grab your Scooby snacks and get on the couch. The news is on. Pakistan blows. Up. Scientology on trial. Israel continues to expand, and Mike Tyson had a daughter. Now the news, or bust style. And the winner is... Forget Simon, let's talk Sonia. Federal Judge Sonia Sotomayor, that is, who was nominated on Monday by President Obama to replace David Souter on the U.S. Supreme Court. If her controversial same-sex marriage decision in Rocky v. Bullwinkle and those pictures of her eating a pickle don't come to light, Judge Sotomayor will become the first Hispanic and third female U.S. Supreme Court justice. An inspiring woman who I believe will make a great justice lauded Obama while introducing Judge Sotomayor's nomination. A case surely to hit the new justice's desk will be the California Supreme Court's upholding of a voter-approved ban on same-sex marriages, while also upholding same-sex marriages that happened prior, and those will remain legal. How confusing is that? As Sotomayor's nomination was announced, nearby, former Attorney General Alberto Don't Call Me Speedy Gonzalez wiped away a tear, mumbled something incoherent, then returned to stocking shelves at Walmart. Local news ticker. A new service from Orbust. These rapid-fire news stories were seen in other publications recently, however poorly researched, written, and altogether biased. You know a town is broke when it's trying to sell its cemeteries, and that's what's happening here in Bend, Oregon. Once raised from the dead, the pioneers who founded this little burb are going to be quite pissed, and maulings and brain-eating will be understandable retribution for our elected leaders. Crook County voters refused higher taxes to pay for its schools and extracurricular activities. This is the same school district that banned the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian by Sherman Alexi for two sentences about masturbation. So it isn't In a related story, sales of wife beaters and stripper mud flaps for pickup trucks have skyrocketed in the region in the past month. Today, like yesterday, a police officer will approach a loitering teen and ask him or her to move on. And two blocks away, a stoner is trying to sell his house, and the sweet stank of kind buds is attracting heavy traffic from home seekers and curious pedestrians. And now, to distract us from wondering under what circumstances and with whom Mike Tyson had a daughter and why Israel keeps expanding, let's take a tour of Stu's favorite place, Dillon Falls. Ron Hubbard, prophet and novelist. Orbust has managed to enrage 
all major religions in the past few weeks. So let's take aim at Hollywood's worst decision since allowing Madonna to act. A great way to make money is to found a religion, said L. Ron Hubbard once, the same sci-fi author and Scientology founder who had to live on a boat in his final years due to tax evasion and death threats. Question, what is the best way to cook duck? See page 46 in Dianetics. Next question, what is a religion? See France, which is now debating whether Scientology is a cult, sect, business, religion, or all of the above. Germany has already banned John Travolta and Tom Cruise's beliefs, another sign of Germany's compassionate wisdom. But America embraces L. Ron's offspring and tax-exempt status, more signs of our growing ignorance. Forced payments are a critical part of France's debate over this religion's validity. While gracefully ignoring its founding notion that an ancient war among aliens sent souls into volcanoes, creating Hollywood producers, soulless creatures of course, who will greenlight any movie in which Cruz should have an accent but doesn't bother and John Travolta gets to wear his favorite feminine garb. One benefit of this kinda sorta religion, Beck is a Scientologist, so it can't all be bad, can it? Speaking of cruise missiles, only days after testing a nuclear weapon, North Korea fired two short-range missiles from its east coast. Sane, smart, and totally competent Supreme Deer Leader Kim Jong-il obviously needs more food to feed his starving citizens, so his continued look-at-me, look-at-me strategy isn't unexpected. What is surprising is that the UN Security Council, which includes North Korea's only friend on Earth, China, denounced these actions as, quote, a clear violation, end quote, of international law. Other international strife, Pakistan keeps announcing it has killed hundreds of Taliban, but the war for the hearts, minds, and nukes of Islamabad continues. Sri Lanka is celebrating the slaughter of the Tamil Tigers, marking the first moments of peace in a country that has been at civil war for over two decades. Other violations of law. And yet another sign that the GOP has lost its mind, Rush, got any pills, Limbaugh, and Dick, don't indict me, Cheney, are apparently trying to get Colin, don't call me Colin, Powell, to resign from the grand old party. Akin to skinny dipping, the GOP's tent keeps shrinking. Yet it is interesting to note that approval ratings for the former VP and future convict prisoner, number 1256, Cheney, have risen 8% from 29% since leaving office. Perhaps the bump is from racists returning to his side as Cheney attacks Obama and Powell, or it's a splendid feeling of renewal during spring as former President Bush's approval numbers have jumped as well, 6% from a total of three Americans who approved of him before he left office. Finally, this op-ed, Bring Gitmo Here, as other communities with supermax prisons scream no to the possibility of suspected terrorists who are definitely tortured at Gitmo being moved into their high-walled, high-security backyards, it is time for Central Oregon to accept that we need those construction jobs and projects. The little armpit of Hardin, Montana, population 3,400, is already begging to host Gitmo's All-Stars, so why shouldn't we? The Badlands are already replete with wanted criminals and barbed wire. Our citizens are incredibly well armed, and we can finally forget the notion that our kids need higher education. Give them a gun, bucket of water, and the Koran. Come to Gitmo CO. You might never leave. That's the news, folks. See you next week. Next up on Orbus News, Curious Novelty Publications or the Future of American Capitalism, You Decide.